from the entire Petty family in honor of our son Adam. Welcome, Welcome to, to Victory, Victory Junction. Junction. You know, as the saying goes, no one ever stood so tall as when they stooped to help a little child. At some point there had to be an aha moment where, gee, I've watched Grandpa drive, I've seen my dad so involved, uh, where, all right, I am going to follow this lead. You know, you would think, but really not. Uh, and and here's, the way I, here's, here's what I tell most everybody. Uh, I was nine or ten years old before I realized everybody's father didn't have a race car. I just thought that's what everybody did. Uh, you know, I just, it just never dawned on me that there were other jobs out there. I, because I never wanted to be a fireman or a policeman or be an astronaut when I was coming along. I just thought everybody had race cars. Um, and it was, it was strange. I grew up in, like I said, in a, in a rural community where everybody was farmers. Uh, dairy farm, tobacco farm. Uh, but everybody in our community were, were farmers. Uh, we just happened to farm race cars. My grandfather was a race car driver and built them and, and raced them. My father came along and that's why he did. And those farms have been passed on from generation to generation. So um, I just assumed from the time I was very young that this is what I would get passed on to was uh, to be a race car driver at some point in time. Did your grandfather sit down and say, Kyle, this is how I got started? No. No? No. My grandfather didn't start racing until late in life. Right. He, was, he was 37, 38, 39 years old uh, and basically he had lived a whole lifetime before that working different jobs, working in, in different industries and stuff. Um, and really to that time then you know obviously that's when when NASCAR started in the late 40s so he decided he'd be a race car driver and uh, you know he really only raced even though he was injured uh, in 61 at Daytona he really only raced a period of about 12 or 13 years. Very short period of time. Uh, my father, I think from a very early age, once my grandfather started, he knew that's what he was going to be. Right. Uh, so I don't think my grandfather ever, we never really talked about saying, you know, this is how I did it, or this is why I did it, or this is the way I did it. Um, the sport had changed so much from when that came along to when my father started, and even when my father started to when I came along and start, uh, and it's changed drastically from the time since I started. When your grandfather, you talk about almost the good old boy circuit, uh, Dukes of Hazard type thing. Yeah. Is that a correct? Uh, oh yeah, at the time, and that's where the sport came from. You know, we can talk about it's. It's funny for me to be around the sport now, uh, and to be about to be around people that are new fans, um, because history is a funny thing. Uh, at some point in time, no matter what history it is, everybody wants to rewrite it, uh, and they want to eliminate all all what they consider at that period of time the politically incorrect part. Right. Okay, I, I tell people if you want to be politically correct. Uh, this sport was started in the trans and, and they were in the beverage transportation business. Okay, that's the way this sport started. Really, they just ran liquor, right. so that's the way it was. And it was a southern sport, um, and that's the way this sport was started. And you can't you can't take away from that. That's just where it was. It was run dirt tracks, short tracks all across the southeastern part of the United States. Now we did venture up uh, into the northeast and venture up into this area, and they went out into the Midwest. And yeah, they'd go to California, but still, the heart and soul of the sport was in the southeast. Um, the way the sport has really changed uh, is basically we're like any other, any other sports industry now. When you look at the NFL, when you look at the NBA, when you look at Major League Baseball, when you look at uh, the NHL, it doesn't make any difference. We market race now. That's why we race in Chicago. That's why we race in Kansas City. That's why we race in L.A. That's why we... Your dad won more races than anybody in the history of this sport, uh, took it to a whole new level of celebrity. How much is that a shadow on you? None. None. I, I, I don't look at it that way. Um, you know, and, and it's funny. <clears throat> I, I guess I've never have. Um, because if, you were, if we were here and you were able to line my grandfather up and set him here and then my father here and, and me here and then if, even if we went over here and put Adam here, uh, we're four totally different individuals. We just happen to do the same thing. But our individual personalities, uh, the way we approach life, the way we approach race and the way we approached what we were doing um, is really different. Uh, and you can say we took the best or we took the worst or whatever, but it was really a different way of looking at things. So, you know, from the very beginning, I don't think, I didn't try to be Richard Petty, you know, and, and I, I don't think there, there's only one Richard Petty, uh, and there was only one Lee Petty, and in the end, there'll be only one Kyle Petty, and there would have only been only one Adam, and I think when you look at it, um, that was the one thing that I think our family took from, from the sport uh, as much as anything and took from other things. 
uh, I was very blessed my father didn't name me Richard Petty like Dale Earnhardt Jr. because it's been a heavy burden for Junior uh, and it is and I, and I think he feels that pressure sometimes uh, and most celebrities when they have a child and they name it uh, name their son or daughter or whatever uh, when it follows and when when you change that or you follow in the same naming footsteps uh, that is an added pressure but to be Richard Petty's son Cal Petty uh, j we just happen to do the same thing but I, I don't feel any I've always looked at it as been a blessing and it's been a positive uh, to be his son. You mentioned all four of that generations all had kind of different attributes. If you had to put a word with Lee Petty, what would you put with that? Um, stubborn. So, stubborn. Yeah, he was just a stubborn guy who, his, his main attribute was he was, he raced for one, I, and I, I'll, I'll lay it out like this, and, and I'll go around and talk sometimes. My grandfather raced for one reason, just to make money. That's what it was all about. It wasn't about trophies. It wasn't about the competition. It wasn't about winning. Yeah. Uh, the winning part came from, from making the money. That's what it was all about. I think when you look at, at my father, he came along, and he fell in love with the sport, uh, and he fell in love with the people and the racing part of it. Uh, and, and he just absolutely loved it. I, I tell people all the time, if you look at me, you can just say lazy. Uh, they had already set the foundation, so it was easier for me just to be lazy. And, and, and I tell people, I just love the people. I love this sport. I grew up, uh, and, and it's funny when you're around something, you learn even though you, you don't think you're learning. Uh, when I was eight or nine years old and hanging out at the race shop and going to the racetrack and then became 10 or 12 and then became 15 and, and was on the pit crew when I was 15 years old, all of a sudden I got to be 18 or 19 and wanted to drive a race car and I stopped and I said now what do I have to learn and I looked back and I thought all you really got to do is learn to drive you already know a lot about the car you know a lot about building the car you know a lot about the engine you know you've already learned a lot and it was like I thought that was the point that I would start but really I had started you know 15 years before that and I think it was the same way with Adam uh, I think we the love of the sport was passed on from my father to myself and to Adam so I, I think when you look at it like that uh, it's just a passion for doing what we're doing. And, or your kids come up to you and say, Dad, the, what's the funniest thing that happened to you at the racetrack? Uh, the, the weirdest thing that ever happened to me at the racetrack is uh, Pocono, Davey Allison. And I had to be 91, 92. Um, there was a guy in the infield that had gotten in a fight. Uh, and they chased him to the fence. And he jumped over the fence and ran out in the middle of the racetrack. Um, <laughs> coming out of turn one to going down the short chute, Davey and I come up out of the corner at about 150 or 60 and there's a guy standing in the middle of the racetrack. And I threw my hand up, and when I threw my hand up, uh, Davey shot to the inside, and as he shot to the inside, he saw the guy at the same time and we both slowed down. And the guy, fortunate for us, the guy ran that way instead of running back across. He ran to the outside of the racetrack, jumped over that wall. Uh, and that's the weirdest thing that has ever happened, period. A man, standing that, in, a man standing in the middle of the racetrack. <laughs> it's usually a deer at Pocono. Yeah, at Pocono, that's true. Website, they got a thing that says, get a haircut, son. What get a haircut. What's that all about? Uh, they're always on the get a haircut thing. <laughs> hey, hey, when I'm riding around a racetrack, people always scream at me, get a haircut. Okay, I thought that went out in like 72, so I always just scream back, lose some weight. Okay, <laughs> so that, that's my comeback to get a haircut, all right? They referred, they referred uh, specifically to a race in Martinsville in 1991 where you had a hard crash, rescue workers had to remove you from the car. Yeah, that's wrong. It was at Indy. Indy, wasn't it? Was, yeah, the wreck was at Indy where the guy was standing on my hair. Was yeah, that? that's oh. a true story. The guy was standing on my hair. So how did it I, work? Just for the camera here? Yeah, no, no, no. That, they, I, I was knocked out, and when the guy got me out of the race car, I was still half unconscious. Uh, and as he would lift me up, I would scream uh, because I was unconscious, but I would scream, and then he would set me back down, and finally somebody told him if you'd get off his hair, he wouldn't scream when you try to lift him up. So <laughs> the guy stepped off my hair, they lift me up, and that was the end of it. That's true. I only have two highlights. In all the years that I've, that I've done this, I have two highlights to me that stand out. Um, in 19, I go back to 1979. In 1979 was the year I started racing. And we built a Dodge. My father had switched to GM. We built a Dodge, went to Daytona, didn't run at all for the test. We came back, and myself and two other guys um, worked on that car for almost a week straight. I mean, we, we'd go home about 12 and come back about 6. Uh, and we put in hundreds of hours in this car. Put that thing together, put my car together. We went down there, uh, and, my, and I ended up winning the ARCA race. But my father ended up winning the Daytona 500. And that was huge. That was huge. I, I just thought racing won't get any better. Uh, but the other highlight for me was to go to Charlotte in, I think, 98. 
uh, with Adam and to win the ARCA race over there with him. So those are, my, my two highlights don't include me driving cars as much as they just include me working on cars.